So we're here on the first tee at Wentworth. And he was pro for 28 years, I think. Bernard Gallagher. He was eight times a Ryder Cup player, three times a captain, of course, won in his final goal as captain in 1995. So one of the greats associated with this fantastic club. And so while the club itself has gone through so many different changes over the years and renovations, perhaps the current renovation is its most impressive. But the fact remains that Wentworth has huge tradition in the game. So while it's been modernized and there's been 20 odd million pounds spent on the club so far, it's still very much a wonderful venue that has ties with the very earliest beginnings of the professional game, certainly, in Great Britain. So as we make our way from the first tee and into the courtyard, if you will, as people come to the club, just going to take you on a little bit of a tour. So we're here on a Wednesday. It's Pro-Am Day. And there is the famous clubhouse with its turrets. And I'm gonna bring you on a little bit of a journey, show you some of the refurbishments and what has happened here over the last 12 months, effectively, since Dr. Chan Chai took ownership and started investing hugely in the club. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah. We are here into the reception area. Hi. And they celebrate everyone who's won the championship here. And they've been playing the PGA Championship for a long time. Obviously at the moment it's called the BMW PGA Championship. It's been a very successful relationship over the last perhaps 14 years. But one of the most famous things that's uh, associated with the club is the international match which was played in 1926. So this is a wonderful painting that kind of depicts that scene from 1926. And here's someone that you'll be familiar with. Right there, Samuel Ryder. So he's there watching the international matches taking place in 1926. Effectively, I think it was eight versus eight, but top US professionals taking on the best of Britain's professionals. And they all gathered as they got ready for the Open Championship. And they played an international match. And that was 1926, and it was here at Wentworth. Samuel Ryder was watching it and decided that he would donate a trophy. He was a seed merchant from north of London I think he was a member of the Verulam Club, if I'm not mistaken. And the following year, they played the first ever Ryder Cup matches. So we're going across now to another little foyer, but these are clubs used by men who have won here. For example, that's Arnold Palmer and his driver. He won the world match play in 1964 and 1967. Gary Players. Wedge, of course, one of the most famous bunker players of all time. We've got Jack Nicholas, world match play winner in 1970. So they're all celebrated here. And through the refurbishment, they've really done a very stylish job in celebrating the history of the club while also modernizing it. So here is from the 1926 international matches. The likes of Tommy Armour, Aubrey Boomer, Archie Comston, and uh, was it Jack Kirkwood, I think it was Jack, but they, they all played in the 1926 match. The famous Walter Hagen captaining the uh, US team. One of the true legends of the sport. So the Ryder Cup then began in earnest in 1927. And they have a little piece here actually, it's quite interesting. Wentworth, where the Ryder Cup was born. And that's the original, that's what the painting is based on. This, this particular scene as they teed off on the east course. Gonzalo Fernandez Castaño is just walking out. Say hello there, Gonzo. How 
are you? Multiple winner on the tour, <laughs> back in Europe. It's good Still to be playing back. a bit on the, in the States. A little bit there, a little bit here. It's it's good to be back. It feels like home to me. It's great to see you. It's so you're still living down in Florida, though? Living in Florida, uh, living the American dream, and yeah. uh, but enjoying coming back home, coming back to the European tour. And of course, coming back to Wentworth, I love the changes, I love the new clubhouse. I think it's uh, definitely um, whatever they did here, they did it very wisely and they invested the money very, very nicely. I couldn't have put it better myself. Well, the best of luck to you. It's great to see you back Thank and you. to your beautiful wife, Alicia. Thank you. And your family. Well, Thank yeah. you. Take care and uh, um, have hello. a great tournament. Thank you very much. It's great seeing you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> There's the great Gonzo. So, anyway, this is where it all began. And that was the original photo, teeing off on the East Course. I'm not sure exactly who that is, but um, this deed of trust, you know, you see Samuel Ryder signing this. Phenomenal. This deed of trust is made the 9th day of December, 1929, between Samuel Ryder of St. Albans in Hertfordshire, seed merchant, and therein after called the donor of the one part and J.H. Taylor of Royal Mid Surrey, James Braid. Look at this, amazing history. The cup should be called and always known as the Ryder Cup. So, and they say where the Ryder Cup was born, they're not wrong. But I tell you, the, the, the actual Ryder Cup then did come back to Wentworth, and the year was 1953. So let me just whiz around with the camera. So here are some great photos from 1953. Big year, obviously, in golf. Ben Hogan winning three of the four major championships. But he didn't play in 1953 in the Ryder Cup. He didn't come back effectively. Um, he made one trip and was victorious at Carnoustie. But here, look at this. Captain Henry Cotton and Lloyd Mangrum. So Henry Cotton, what a class act. Three-time Open champion. Lloyd Mangrum, you know, US Open champion. Someone who is just utterly fascinating. Um, he won the Purple Heart. He may have won two Purple Hearts in, the, in World War uh, Two, and he was a, an incredible golfer, but a real tough guy. But as they all were, very well turned out for these sort of functions. But it was a big win for the United States. So they have that bit of history. Actually, this one photo I think is worth watching. Look at this, and I'll show you why. So this is the presentation of the Ryder Cup in 1953 to Lloyd Mangrum. And uh, why don't we just head up to where that all happened. So as we go through another finely appointed hallway and up the stairs. Some mon wonderful photos here, actually, look. Being a bit of a Hogan nut, this is phenomenal. Gotta love this. There he is, the hawk. Himself and Sam Snead won the 1956 Canada Cup, which of course now is called the World Cup. But uh, what an awesome experience that must have been to uh, see Ben Hogan in action, and it all happened here at Wentworth. Thank you, sir. So I just want to bring you out here, because we're now out on the balcony here at Wentworth. And down below is a magnificent scene. Let me just show you this. So that's where that presentation took place in 1953, where Lloyd Mangrum received the Ryder Cup. Well, a couple of my compatriots are on the first tee, playing in the Pro-Am. So Keith Duffy and uh, Brian McFadden are down there. I wonder who, which one of them is teeing off. But we're getting late in the day on this Wednesday. The Pro-Am, you know, part of the festival really and that wonderful atmosphere that they have created at Wentworth every year. But I'll just show you very quickly what's going on around here. This is going to be a special area for the members. So they're going to be able to have champagne here and uh, observe first tea and observe the, the atmosphere and kind of savour it as well because they're lucky enough to be members here and it costs a pretty penny to be a member of Wentworth but I think it's worth it and this is the one week a year when they give it over to 
the pros for this flagship event on the European tour. So that's just a little insight into the first tee, the forecourt, the golf club, the clubhouse and a little bit of history as well. Despite all the modernization, there are very strong links with the past here at Wentworth.